Hello everybody, welcome to our first weekly reset and plan with me. So I'm not sure if this will become a regular thing, it's gonna depend on whether you enjoy it, but I've had so many requests to go back and do some plan with me's. So I have my planner here. I also have this new notebook. So I've pulled this one out before, but this is an Erin Condren soft bound notebook that has some lists on one side and some dot grid over here. I put this fun, please insert your name sticker on here from Death Note, just because I thought that would be fun. And what I've been doing is I put a list of all the things I wanted to do to reset. So this is things like get my nails done, which I did earlier. I'll throw in a clip of that. Reset my notion, make some appointments, water my plants, <laughs> and then things in terms of my planning, which are part of my resets, which is planning my meals, which I actually had already done this week, getting groceries, HB90, which is my goal setting plans, which includes my Kanban board. We're going to walk through that whole thing. Planning for the kickoff call, which is tomorrow. HB90 bootcamp starts tomorrow. So if you're interested, the link is down below. And then cleaning. So cleaning is always part of my reset for the weekend. Sometimes I do it on Saturdays, sometimes on Sundays. My husband and the whole family helps out. So I've been doing some laundry. I was working on my writing room, which is still a work in progress. It's not fully decorated the way that I want it to be. I'm working on this office in here and the kitchen, the bedroom, the bathroom, and all of those like main touch points. And then we'll see kind of where we go from there. I'm not going to show you every single thing that I do, but I thought it would be fun instead of just doing top down, show you my planning for the week. Let's show how I integrate this weekly reset where I clean up my space. Everything feels a lot better. I'm not really the like tidiest person in the world. And so I always need a reset. My desk gets a mess. There are stickers everywhere. And it feels so good to go into the week on Monday with fresh start, fresh clean everything. So let's get inspired to do some cleaning, to get some things reset, to really sit down and plan for what are my priorities for the week? What do I want to get done this week? What's my non-negotiables in terms of what has to get done? And then what are my sort of I'd like to do these kind of things. We only have two weeks left of this quarter. So we're going to start planning Q3 this week. And I think it'll be really fun to figure out what are the last remaining little things. So I'm going to show you my Kanban board, the whole process. So let's get started. Let me know in the comments as I go through this video, if you like this style of reset, or if you'd rather just see the planner, we're open. We're just taking this one step at a time. I definitely won't do this every week for time sake, but it'll be fun to just see kind of where it goes. So I hope you enjoy it. Let's reset.
Okay, cleaning progress has been officially made as good as it's going to get. And even just that little bit of refresh here and there is worth it. You don't have to spend all day, but just getting your desk cleared off, some stuff off the floor, whatever it is to make your space feel reset can be helpful. So now I'm gonna move on to my planning so I can enjoy the rest of my afternoon. And that always starts with my Kanban boards. So this, if you're not familiar with my channel, this is a system that I use that I took pieces of things like visual workflow, like Kanban boards and things like that, and combined it with some of my own things that I wanted to do. And I call this the HB90 system. It's a 90 day planning system where I basically decide what are my three goals. You can have up to three goals for the quarter. And I decided specifically what it is I'm trying to accomplish. And then I break those goals down into projects. And then I look at my time and I decide which projects and which tasks can I actually tackle in the next 90 days with all of my other responsibilities, with everything that's going on in life, what is realistic for me to get done. And then I put every single little task related to the projects that'll help me get to that goal up on sticky notes and I color code them goal one, goal two, goal three. Now Kanban boards traditionally go left to right. I do mine top to bottom. So this is stuff that is yet to do in the middle here is my doing section. And then at the bottom is all the things that I've gotten done. So my first goal is my writing goal. And while it looks sadly, like I haven't gotten a lot done, I actually have gotten more done this quarter than in previous quarters. So I finished the rough draft of my book. I actually haven't even moved some of these edits down. So I'm going to do that now. I am at about 17,000 words in edits. So three of these can go down and I'm currently working on 20K. So that'll go here. So the website audit is done, but I haven't finished the fix of it. And then all of these other little sticky notes are projects to re-upload my books. And I had intended to completely reformat, redo the back matter, add bonuses, and lots of other stuff that I was doing for something I call Project Phoenix. And it just turned out that even though these are broken down into tiny little minuscule tasks, there wasn't time to do it this quarter. I ended up needing more time to rest after the busyness of Q1. And sometimes that is just going to be the way it is. Even with a system that helps you figure out a realistic set of things to do, there's still going to be tasks or projects that it's like, you know what, it turned out that that was not as much a priority for this quarter as I thought. And it, I wanted to get the rough draft done. I wanted to start working on my edits a lot more than I wanted to get these other things done. So we are only two weeks away from the end of the quarter. And in fact, tomorrow, as I'm recording this, tomorrow is the beginning of my HB90 course. If you're interested in joining and you want to help plan your next 90 days, the link will be down in the description. Just click the button that says show more below this video and you can find that link to join or to come see what it's all about. But we start that planning process tomorrow. So I will already start planning Q3 and I already know that all the stuff that's up here now is also going to be carried over to Q3. And I'm almost finished with this, like this goal for heart breathings almost got completely done. Really all that's left is a couple more YouTube videos and like the kickoff call and stuff for HB90. Then this third goal is one that is more like my six months for life. It's a six month goal and I get as much done in the quarter, but it's not as time-based. So it's okay that there's still some stuff up here because I knew this one was going to go to the next quarter as well. And so most of that has gotten done. And right now I'm not really doing a review of how the quarter went so much as at the beginning of every new week. I like to take a look at what are the tasks that are left on my Kanban board? What are the deadlines I have coming up over the next week? And what things do I need to pull down to the doing section so that I can commit to doing them this week? And then I take what I've got on my like middle section of my Kanban board and I integrate that into my actual paper planner. And for me, this ability to see what needs to get done up front and center on the wall every time I walk into my office, the ability to also see it in my planner every day and that repetition. I also have this in Notion. It's not necessary to have it written so many places, but it just helps me to stay on track and to stay focused and to stay clear on 
What are my priorities and what are the things that are just distracting me? So the first thing I'm going to do as I get ready to plan is I'm going to just go through it. I'm going to say, what are the things that I still want to accomplish before Q3 begins in two weeks? And what are the, what of those things am I going to get done in this next week? So that's what I'm going to do is I'm going to evaluate them, pull them to the middle, to the doing section, and then I'm going to write them into my planner and schedule them in for the week. Now that I know from these post-it notes, like I decided what went on these post-it notes all the way back in March, getting ready for April, May, June. And so I didn't don't have to like put a lot of thought into what my plan is for this upcoming week because it's all right here. It's just a matter of, okay, as the quarter goes on, it's sort of like you get as much done as you can. I never clear my boards and clearing everything and getting every task done isn't really my goal. My goal is just to do the best I can and to stay clear without getting distracted by things that aren't on my board. And it helps me so much. And I've tried to adopt as much as possible a mindset of I'm going to do the best I can. I'm going to get the most out of each week that I can while also taking care of myself and maintaining my joy in the process. And so it's not as much about getting everything done as it is about just staying clear and focused and continuing to move forward. Because even though there's a lot of things here that are left undone, I know that I can still just get those done in the next quarter. It doesn't mean anything about me that these are not done in this quarter. It just means, hey, look at all this progress I've made. And that's always a choice I get to make is, do I want to be upset about the things that I didn't get done? Or do I want to celebrate the things that did get done that I know are moving me forward in big ways? And then eventually it starts to snowball where it's like, okay, lots and lots of things are getting done. And in fact, this week, I'm going to get a lot of things done because I have a very clear idea of what I want to do this week and what I want to get done before the quarter begins. So now that I have these up here, my next real task in my planning, usually I do this upstairs, but I'm going to do it down here because I don't have any good lighting upstairs, is I pull out my HB90 planner, which is in an A5 planner, and I just pull those pages out and I start integrating all of these in my to-do list. And like I said, I like to write these things multiple times, so I'll show you that process. And I like to estimate how much time I spend on each task. So you can kind of see how I do it. Although I will say, even if you decide to follow the HB90 system, there's lots of people who don't track their time. There's lots of people who use digital tools instead of physical tools. So it's a very flexible, adaptable system. So you can kind of use it how you want and I can just share the way that I use it. So let's get moving. I also will take a look at my Google Calendar and see if there's any like doctor's appointments or other little things going on with the family that I need to account for in my time. And then I am off to the races. So I'm gonna pull out my stickers and my planner and let's plan for the week. So this is my lovely Kiki K A5 binder. I love it so much and I'll show it to you in a minute. But first I wanted to show you, so this is my very messy sticker binder where I keep all of my stickers and you don't have to plan with stickers obviously, but they make me happy. I love them. And so I try to keep them organized. I'll probably reorganize them in a video coming up, but I also wanted to show you my Erin Condren vertical planner that I've been using for my meal planning. So I have loved this type of planner because you can use the three boxes. You could do this in a happy planner too for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And I find it so much easier to plan my entire week out at once. And then I can set my grocery list based on this and I can either order groceries or go grocery shopping. And that is usually part of my weekly reset. So I will share that with you in future videos a little bit, but let's move on to how I actually plan out my week. So this is a inside view of that Kiki K planner. I might be resetting it for July, but I'm not sure yet. I tend to keep all of my goals listed in here my gratitude journal, some of my budgeting, although I'm moving that to a different planner. I have pictures in here. Uh, I have meeting notes in here. And then one of my main sections is my daily planner. So this is my HB90 planner. The first 50 pages are a goal setting workbook. And then the rest of it is either just a weekly planner or a weekly and daily planner. And you can print it in letter size or it comes in A5 size. And then you can print it at like 83% if you want to put it in a happy planner. It also comes in digital. So if you want to use it on an iPad or uh, with a S pen or something like that, you can also use it there. 
but one of the first things I do after I've looked at my Kanban board is I pull out the pages for the week that I'm gonna use and then I complete a weekly review. And this is so important for my success. I do weekly, monthly, and quarterly reviews, basically just looking at how was I feeling over this week? How am I doing my goals? Am I on track? Uh, what can I do to stay successful? What uh, deadlines do I have coming up and stuff like that? And it just gives me that eagle eye view. Reviews are so important just to see where am I in the process? What do I need support? Where do I need help? You know, that kind of thing. Then if you've never seen this planner before, these pages might look a little bit different from anything you've seen, but I started doing this back when I was using a Hobonichi because I realized that I would put stuff in the weekly spread, but I didn't have a clear view of exactly what tasks I was trying to accomplish throughout the week. So when I created my own planner, I put this basically task dashboard here so that for each of my three goals, I could see exactly what tasks I wanted to complete. I apologize that there's something weird I'm seeing on my edits going on with the lighting. I think it might have been the sun um, coming in and out of the clouds. But anyway, please ignore that. You can see here I have like all the tasks I want to complete with goal one, goal two, and goal three. I'm not exactly copying them from my post-it notes. Sometimes I get a little bit more granular in my planner just because I have more space. Uh, but you basically get an eagle eye view and a checklist of here's the tasks I'm planning to complete in my main projects for this week. Then I use this important notes box just to put the things that have a time associated with them. And I'm not putting in here the things that include my kids because I'll add that in later. But this project task box here with the task blocks might be something you haven't seen before. So in my HB90 system, now not everybody uses task blocks if you're not really into tracking your time or you, you just really rebel against how you're using your time. I like to estimate how long each project that I'm working on and how long each task is going to take me. So I use those task block pages to estimate each of the projects that you see on the left, like Disappearance of Vanessa Shaw, how many hours, like how many 30 minute task blocks, Pomodoros, am I going to use on that task or that project this week? And this is so helpful because then throughout the week, every time I spend 30 minutes on one of these projects, like I've spent 30 minutes making a reel, I will mark it into that project task blocks sheet. That way next week I can see okay, I estimated seven task blocks for my reels. Did it take me that much or did it take me more or did it take me less? And then I can use that information to better plan for my next week. So let's say I had a plan to work on the disappearance of Vanessa Shaw and it took me 20 task blocks and I had only planned for 15. Well, next week I can plan for 20 and that way I'm always continuing to get more like useful information about how I'm spending my time, where I am overestimating how long things are gonna take or way underestimating how long things will take. And at this point I know, you know, the tasks that are recurring in my schedule, so for example, like creating a video like this one, I have a really good idea at this point how long it takes me to create a video, to get it edited, to get it outlined, to record it and all of that just because I've done it so often and not just that I've done it often but that I have done it so often and tracked how long it took. So I have a pretty good idea of the average amount of time it takes to do certain tasks. Now sometimes of course I'm doing tasks that I've don't do regularly or I've never done before. So I can't really estimate it. I have to just like guess. But for the most part, I'm doing writing or emails or videos or other tasks that I do often. And so I have a pretty good idea of how long it's going to take me. And the reason this is so important and crucial to my personal success is that I can see exactly what's on my plate and I can estimate whether or not I'm actually going to be able to get it done. And some of this will still not be done perfectly. Like I never follow through on my plan exactly like I thought, but that usually has more to do with my energy and how I'm feeling rather than the time I had available. And I try to work in buffer time so that I can 
have a headache or have a day where I take a day off. But sometimes I just make this plan and then I just do the best I can and I don't beat myself up when I can't 100% follow through with it because you know, I had a migraine or I wasn't feeling well or I was tired or I didn't sleep well or something like that, like life happens. But that's one of the reasons that I have sort of three steps here. I have the, the ideal task list and then I have the estimate of how long it's gonna take. Then I write it all down in terms of which day of the week I intend to actually do that. So you can see me here, like looking back at that task list and trying to decide, okay, which day do I have availability to get that task done? Then I also have daily pages in this planner that I use so that I can be more flexible. So if I put something on for Thursday, rather than just being stuck with it on Thursday, when I get to the Thursday daily page, I can make a different plan if there's things that came up earlier in the week and I didn't get to follow through and I have to move something I intended to do on Tuesday to Thursday, I have that flexibility. Now, one of the cool things about HB90 and about planning in this way, whether you're using a system or not, is that you can really make it work for you. So some people don't like to track their time. Some people would just, you know, make a list of all the things they're going to do, but not really worry about making a plan for when they're going to do it. And that can work just as well. And I think that one of the things to realize when you're trying to figure out your planning style is really a self assessment of how do I work best and what types of things do I consistently like rebel against? Like what kinds of things do I enjoy doing? What kind of things am I just never going to do? So some people are just never going to be the kind of people who like to track their time or like to have a set schedule for when you're going to do things. Like every day at this time, I'm going to wake up and do these five tasks. Like some people, it's never going to happen. Other people thrive on that sort of schedule. And so instead of trying to be like someone else or trying to force yourself into patterns that don't necessarily work for you, I really encourage you to just sit back and think, how do I work best? Like what makes me happy? What are my natural tendencies? What tends like when things were working best for me, what was going on with that? Like was I making checklists? Was I using a planner? Was I using sticky notes? Like what worked best for me? And then using and leaning into those things that were working great and then discarding the rest. And then if it's something you've never really tried before, try it and have fun with it. Make it a game. Did this work for me? Could I try tracking my time? I've never tried it. Uh, and have an open mind about trying new things, but like don't expect yourself to like, do something that you know isn't gonna work for you just because it's working for someone else. And I think that's some of my best advice with, with planners. So once the week is set, that is my intention for how I want my week to go. But the daily pages are what I do every night before bed or the day before my plan. Sometimes I do them the morning of if I need to. So at the top, I write out things that I don't wanna forget that may not be part of my goals, but they're just things that I need to get done. And then I will use that timed thing, the little calendar with the 6 a.m. to um, 10 p.m. to mark out what my day looks like. And then I will put which tasks I hope to achieve. And then I put an estimate of how long I think those tasks will take. So here's a full look at the task blocks and estimates with when I plan to do things and then how my Monday is set up. And you know, maybe I won't follow through with this 100%, but I'm gonna do the best I can and I'm gonna go into the week feeling really good about it. So that's basically how I plan my week. And so it is about 3.30, a little bit short of 3.30. So planning the week itself takes about 40 minutes and then cleaning up the house can take anywhere from a couple of hours to whatever I have time for. Now, something that I didn't get to show that is part of this planning process is also that I have an ideal weekly schedule. I can't follow it every week because sometimes there's special things happening. And I just did a video recently about how I created a special ideal weekly schedule of how I want to arrange my time during the summer because it's 
is different because I have my kids home with me all the time. And so I will have a different schedule in August when the kids go back to school and it'll be the first time that my little Evie is going to school. So that's going to change things pretty significantly, but I'm going to enjoy the summer while she's here. But I sometimes will have that up as well. Um, or in my planner, I'll pull that page out so that as I'm planning what I'm going to do throughout the week, I can also take into account how much time I have for writing each day, how much time I have for, for other projects, what day I'm going to be filming, that sort of thing. But that helps me when I sit down to plan to see how I'm going to arrange my time. How do I fit these tasks that I want to get done into my week? And then I try to stay as flexible as possible. It's never going to go exactly as I planned for it to go. But most of the time I get 75% of the things I intended to get done, done. And that is a vast improvement over where I was, you know, just six or seven years ago when I had no real plan. I would just say, I'm going to get these thousand things done. And then I would end every week, not really aware of how much I had finished, how much I still had to do. Everything just felt overwhelming all the time. So following this kind of system where I'm always aware of what I'm trying to accomplish, how far I am in the process, how close I am to getting everything done. I can visually see from here on the wall, how many tasks I've completed and what there is left to do. And that just provides this clarity that instantly provides not only focus, but momentum. So anyway, that is how I set up my week. I hope you guys enjoyed this first weekly reset and plan with me. Please let me know in the comments if you liked this sort of hybrid version, or if you'd rather just see the plan with a voiceover or how you'd prefer to see this. I'm sure there will be lots of different opinions, but I'd love to hear them as long as they're kind. And don't forget that HP90 bootcamp starts tomorrow if you're watching this right as it comes out and we run this every single quarter once you've taken it all the way through you get to go through it every single quarter as many times as you want you can always attend the kickoff call which is just a big pep talk for everybody so that is going to be tomorrow and I'm so excited I'm so looking forward to it and I'm really looking forward to planning Q3 my mid-year planner lineup all of my new Erin Condren monthly planners are here I'm going to be using more planners in the second half of the year than I did the first and I can't wait to share all of that with you lots of fun stuff coming up so I will We'll see you in my next video. Make sure you're subscribed, hit that like button and leave me a comment down below about what you'd like to see. And I will see you all soon. Bye. Mm -hmm.